Hi everyone, um, this is another sort of vinyl update. Um, anyway, uh, I've got a, a bit of time while well, I'm doing some tapes to do this video, but I've discovered that doing this whole sort of tape label thing does sort of eat up a lot of your time. Um, and uh, yeah, this is our next release actually. Uh, we've already done one with um, this Bristol band who do math rock around around but this this one I'm particularly um, excited about is uh, the whale for the Madrian um, which is our next release um, tape. Uh, this is a mock-up that I've done on the inkjet printer I mean the labels are going to be done on the inkjet but um, I'm getting someone to do the J cards um, get a local printer but um, and this will be on sort of a black tape instead of a white but um, the artwork on this is absolutely gorgeous, absolutely love it, and it's been an absolute riot working with that on Photoshop, um, putting the J-Card together. Um, yeah, so uh, I've got some CDs here, it's mostly vinyl today. Um, but yes, uh, first off is I've been on a bit of a stereo lag kick recently. Um, I managed to get a new copy of Emperor Tomato Ketchup. Um, which is probably my favourite one. I, I just think this is their most one of their most consistent albums. Uh, Morris Aldiac Quintet. And again, this one's a very sort of consistent album. A lot more, um, a bit more lo-fi than Emperor to catch up, um, and a bit more lays a bit more heavily on the, the um, crowd rock. And then this one's from '97. Um, this one is a follow up to uh, 96. This is um, Emperor Tomato Ketchup, and this is uh, Dots and Loops. Um, again, you know, um, th this has some really good moments on there, but um, I was actually a bit disappointed by this record. This this was a major sort of shift in sound. It's, it's a sort of a jazzy sort of drum and bass sound. Um, it sounds a bit dated, you know, it, it very sounds very much of its time all these other albums are, are timeless. Um, yeah, so moving on to the vinyl, I've got, um, I was having a conversation about that new Leon Bridges album, Coming Home, um, and about how awful it was, well, how boring it is, you know, um, with, um, some guy called Morgan on present listening group and he suggested that um, I listen to um, Charles Bradley uh, who's um, on Daptone Records who as you all know Daptone is sort of uh, this soul revivalist label um, and you know all those stories a 60 year old he was practically homeless his sort of career was um, a little more than being a James Brown impersonator and admittedly this this one, the first one, No Time For Dreaming is a solid record and I'm not quite sure about this, the follow up victim of love um, it does get a bit samey after a while um, but yeah, not bad um, I've got replacements don't tell a soul um, this one was a bit of a disappointment. I mean, I'm, I'm not talking about the, but it, a dis disappointment in terms of you know this was meant to be VG plus and it looked more closer to VG. And I think I might put some blue on it and see if I can make it sound better. I mean, it didn't sound too bad, but this album is the worst um, replacements album. Uh, you can you can blame the overproduction, but you know I know plenty of um, albums that are overproduced, which sound which are fine, you know. Um, but it does have its saving grace in terms of um, uh, songs like "I'll Be You" and uh, "Aching to Be," but you know, they're a bit, they're in the minority. Um, okay, next up is uh, Gweno. Um, I can't, it's a Welsh album, I can't pronounce the title, um, 
uh, but it translates as the last day. Um, this this is a great album. This is probably my album of the year. Um, it was actually released in 2004, but it's finally got a proper release uh, this, I think it's last month, like last month. This is just an amazing album. You know, it's it's heavily influenced by um, stuff like Dia Derbyshire's White Noise work, um, the United States of America, um, the, the short-lived sort of um, early electronic band, uh, there's a, also um, sort of nods to Stereo Lab in, in a very subtle way. Um, in more obviously groups like Broadcast, um, but it's not a carbon copy of those. It, it, this is a, a much more um, unlike some of the influences. It's a lot less claustrophobic, and it's, it's a bit more ethereal. And at times, it's it, it's maybe a bit more poppier, I suppose. Um, this is just a great album, um, and as well as Welsh, there's one song which is like some complete gibberish. And the last track on there, Answer, is something Cornish, because her her father is actually from Cornwall and is is one of the very few speakers of Cornish. Um, in fact, enough, her mother actually went to prison. Uh, is part of the whole sort of Welsh language movement in the eighties, which was a bit of an eye opener. I didn't know people went to prison for um, the whole uh, Welsh language thing. Uh, I know, I think in the eighties, over Channel Four, doing a, a Welsh language channel, which actually still survives to this day. Um, so last up is this beauty, uh, replacements, the twin tone ears. Really excited about this one. Um, you know, I have all the other, I have all the major label um, replacements albums. I'm a complete replacements obsessive. You know, um, and the same with Tusker Do and like a lot of those sort of Twin Cities bands. Well, those two Twin City bands. Um, you know, really, really. Really great um, release. You know, uh, I'd never thought I'd actually own any of these albums on vinyl. And uh, I know Stink isn't particularly a great album. They weren't a punk band, but um, I do have a soft spot for uh, Sorry Ma. I forgot to take out the trash. You know, it's got Shiftless When Idol. Hootenanny's got um, uh, Within Your Reach, which is probably probably one of my favourite uh, replacements tracks. And even though I think Let It Be gets a tad overrated, I'm more of a fan of uh, Tim, um, it's still a great album, you know, in spite of its flaws, it's not quite uh, as uh, concise as Tim, but I mean Traps for Cold Dare, favourite thing, and obviously you get the staples like um, Androgynous, Unsatisfied, you know, great songs, and Answering Machine, and I know there's been a lot of talk about these, uh, they're they're sort of digitally sourced and they sort of retain some of the editing mistakes that um, that sort of plate the CDs and I understand what if you have the originals there's no point in owning this unless your originals are extremely unplayable um, but for 50 quid for four records you know I, I couldn't say no so yeah, um, later this month I'm going to London, but I've, I've decided that's going to be the sort of the last sort of um, I'm going to be spending on vinyl for a little while. Um, and there isn't really a lot that I, I'm, I haven't really pre-ordered anything, so that's going to be it for a little while. You know, I, I've been actually selling more than I've been buying. Uh, you know, um, which is not a problem. I think my vinyl collection reads a bit thinning out, uh, and I've managed to sell off. You know, I have about sort of a grand worth of, uh, of uh, sound recording and uh, f um, camera equipment, which um, 
I sold that off to to do the label. I mean, sacrifices have to be made, but I'm I'm not actually too bothered about it. It's a bit more fiddly, sort of filming videos on my mobile, but I'm pretty cool with that. Um, but I might do an unboxing video of this in, in a minute. Um, but until then, goodbye.